two world-changing events happened in 1775. The American Revolution began and the flush toilet was invented. Can we say thank you and hallelujah <laughs> collectively? Toilets haven't changed much since then. But this morning, Ben Tracy says, one of the world's richest men is doing something about that. Ben, good morning to you. Good morning, Gail. We're talking about Bill Gates, and of course, he is best known for creating a revolution in computers. But he believes innovations in toilet technology could also change the world and save millions of lives. Bill Gates could spend his billions on just about anything, but he decided to have his foundation host a toilet fair in Seattle. So we need to come up with something that has the same attractive properties as the flush toilet, and yet uh, can be made available to everyone on the planet. Uh, and so we can think of that as a, a toilet for the 21st century. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is offering up nearly $7 million for engineers to overthrow the kind of throne we've known. You're looking uh, at uh, some toilet options. It's not glamorous, but it is important. More than two and a half billion people, 40% of the world's population, do not have access to sanitation. That's eight times the population of the United States. The most neglected thing uh, in all of the, the things uh, that are done to, to help the poor of the world. Doo doo. Number two, caca. This cheeky video on the foundation's website still sends a serious message. Imagine that. No reliable sanitary toilet. What would you do? Well, what you have to do, use anything you can find, which means in no time, you've got a big pile of problems. Drinking and bathing water becomes contaminated and disease spreads. Children often suffer the most. 1.5 million die worldwide each year from poor sanitation. Sanjay Wigisikra heads UNICEF's water sanitation and hygiene programs. But how big of a problem is access to sanitation worldwide? It's a huge problem. About 2,750 children died every day as a result of poor sanitation, access to water, and poor hygiene. That can, can give you an idea of the scale. That's about 100 school buses um, every single day. Yet the obstacles to fixing the problem are also huge. There is no sewer infrastructure in many developing nations, and water is scarce. So any new approach to toilets has to be self-contained, cheap, and produce its own energy. At the toilet fair in Seattle, some models turn urine into water for flushing, biodegraded human waste into fertilizer, or used insects to eat it. The maggot is not a very choosy thing when it comes to what it wants to eat. In the end, Bill Gates himself gave hundreds of thousands of dollars to some of the teams, including engineers from Caltech. Their solar-powered device reuses water and turns human waste into hydrogen gas that then produces energy. This event was a revelation for Kenya's Minister of Water and Irrigation. She now has a new sense of how waste can be used. It can be used to produce gas, it can be used to produce fertilizer, it can be used for many other purposes. So we need now to put our act together. Now the Gates Foundation says the seven million dollars it's offering is worthwhile because for every dollar spent on improving sanitation in these countries, you get nine dollars back in higher productivity and lower health care costs. Wow, so many of us take the toilet for granted. That certainly puts it in perspective. So true. So say, Ben, somebody comes up with the idea and they said, I've got it, I know what to do. How hard will it be to get it actually on the ground and working in these nations? That, that is one of the big obstacles. How do you actually deliver this right. technology if you figure it out? That's where you'd probably see the Gates Foundation partnering with the UN, with UNICEF, who have the relationships with these countries to get the technology on the ground. But one of the interesting things they told us is that even if you get a toilet there, mm -hmm. getting people to use it is a struggle right. because it's a cultural norm in many of these places not to use it. What's the next step then? So the next step for the Gates Foundation, they're investing millions of more dollars to you know, further this technology. They're trying to get these engineers to take what they already have done, improve it, and see if they can actually get a product that works. Ben Tracy, thanks very much. Thank Appreciate you, Ben. It.